Hey cats, thanks for joining me. It's Ed Polkadot Bud here. Back today with the viewer's favorite running news. Lots of viewers have been asking where the running news is. It's back. Lots of stories to get through today, so let's get to it. But first, if you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications when I launch those new videos for you. We're rapidly getting towards 25,000 subscribers. Thank you. You can also help the channel out a great deal by giving this video a thumbs up like and also sharing it with your running buddies. Merci beaucoup. First story up today is from Nike. I came across this strange image of the Nike Air Scorpion. Looks like they're gonna release this later in the year and it got me thinking about whether we might see something similar crop up in a running shoe style context. This is obviously a super cushioned Air Max style model and clearly a lifestyle shoe. But there are some nods to more performance features here. The thin fly wires there for the eyelets and the continued use of that fly knit material will no doubt hearten some of the runners out there who really love that upper material. I think the most interesting aspect here though is the introduction of some other type of foam into that air enclosure. It certainly looks bobbly with that sort of texture that we've seen from Zoom X, that segmented chopped up Zoom X, whatever they're calling that, reconditioned perhaps. We've seen them utilize that in the forthcoming next nature version of the Pegasus Turbo and that already released Alpha Alpha Fly next nature as well that some people don't like very much. I mean if you want an Alpha Fly that's a lot heavier and full of glue in the midsole, go for it. So I think the flagship Zoom X foam is going to make an appearance in a lot more lifestyle shoes this year for Nike. That's some cage around the air units and I can't imagine this being any use in a running shoe setting. Reminds me a little bit of that Air Max pre-day that I picked up last year where you've got that big sort of enclosure around the air unit. Vapor Max is an odd one. It does make you wonder whether it would actually work as a running shoe. I think it would just be too unstable. Also, what's with that really extended tongue? We have seen a similar thing in the leaked images of that Next Nature Pegasus Turbo. Maybe that's a Nike staple for 2022. Let's hope not. I mean, it's already appeared on a load of different models in recent time. I'm thinking the Zoomfly 4 back to the Pegasus 35 as well. Are we going to see Nike build more tech into their shoes and worry less about weight this year? Well, they've been doing that for a couple of years, really. Look at something like the Prime X or the Tempo Next Percent, both more worried about the tech for propulsion rather than the actual weight of the shoe. It remains to be seen. I might even try and pick up the Air Max Scorpion just for a bit of a laugh, really. Story 2. So images keep surfacing of a possible ASICS Metaspeed Sky 2 with an increased midsole stack, although that drop does look a little altered, doesn't it? It looks like there's a huge amount of foam now in the forefoot of the shoe. Maybe ASICS here will attempt to max out the foam in the shoe along the lines of some of the other super shoes we've seen over the last year. Perhaps repeating a little bit of what Nike did with the Alpha Fly. Let's not forget that a lot of people couldn't get on with that shoe simply because the drop was so minimal, I suppose. I think there was only a 5 mil drop in the Meta Speed Sky before, so it's going to be pretty minimal in this new version. I'm not sure about switching out those superb waxy laces to these perforated ones in the new model. That seems like a backward step to me. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Perhaps it's a prototype change and it won't see the light of day come release. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Another question I've got about this one is whether ASICS will continue with two different versions of the shoe. The Edge and the Sky had varying midsole stacks and drops. The edge with an 8mm drop opposed to the 5mm sky. It seemed to confuse people more than anything, and with such scarcity of the shoe, I can't see people picking up both models. In fact, I don't recall anybody picking up both of them. One other unanswered question here is also in the outsole of the shoe. Will that ASICS Metaspeed Sky 2 have an increased amount of rubber in the heel? did seem to wear down pretty quickly. That foam isn't the most resilient. It's not like I've been ramming my heel into the floor either. I've been using these more for speed sessions, but in this ghastly weather we've had recently, it's really taken a toll on the shoe. The Flight Foam Turbo midsole material really does take a bit of a pasting, even from light old me going at high speed. It's more stained than a nightclub carpet. More on this shoe when I get it. Story three. I came across a really interesting study surrounding running from Japan. The University of Tsukuba found that even running just for 10 minutes at moderate pace could have incredible mental health benefits. All the runners they had in the survey really found a boosted mood, lots of increased blood flow to certain important parts of the brain. The simple mechanics of running 
That increased movement and the need for balance and perception are all vital to us as humans. Think of all that sensory information that you've got coming in when you're running. You're processing loads of things there, you know, the surface under your feet, what you can see in front of you and what you can hear around you. It's no wonder really that this activity is becoming more and more popular year on year. I shall have to remember this next time I'm out on some 10 by 400 meter repeat session in the pouring rain that it's doing me so much good. It'll make me feel so much better when I pour the water out of my shoes when I get back. I wonder if this study still has some relevance at higher intensity levels, or is it just down to being a moderate effort? You get that enjoyment from it. I don't know. Perhaps it scales depending on how much you run. One thing that does split this study aside from lots of others that have been done before is that they were done using cycling as the activity, a less weight-bearing coordination activity there with running. I think there's quite a few other things that are going on. So, make sure you get out for your 10 minutes a day. Story 4. After my recent efforts in the Adidas Adizero Prime X, I found that even at a moderate effort, they make a huge difference. They just lower the perceived effort so much, it really got me thinking. Well, it appears World Athletics have been thinking about this sort of thing as well. I think they're making steps to create a more level playing field. No pun intended. Certainly where track and field is concerned anyway. So no rule changes here for road running, but track and field will change in November 2024. The midsole thickness, including plates, etc., will have a 20 millimeter max height rule. Obviously, this is some way off. It gives the rain shoe manufacturers a big opportunity, I suppose, to work on some new tech and it's only really aimed at competitive track and field runners here or other disciplines that you might be doing in that sort of field. I'm sure that Nike, Adidas and all the rest will have some new options for us by then. They'll be able to experiment and create some new spikes that are the appropriate height for loads of cash obviously. Now it got me thinking which ones would then be outlawed that are around at the moment. The Adizero Avanti TYO shoes would be banned apparently under these rules. On the Adidas's website it says they're a 27 millimeter heel stack as would be the Dragonfly spikes from Nike. By the manufacturer's measurements these would be over but apparently not so. Now, looking at the World Athletics PDF with all the allowed shoes these are still under 20 millimeters. I don't quite understand that. The data sheet suggests they're okay. So what am I missing here, guys? Am I being really foolish here? Am I being a bit dense? Am I missing out on something? Both of those models on the data sheet suggest that they're okay from 800 below and above right through most of the track events. So not sure about that. Let me know in the comments what I'm missing out here. It does seem as if there'll be a more global height limit though for all of the disciplines. So it makes some sort of sense. I don't think any of us will have to worry about that. Not me, anyway. I do hope to get back to the track to test out those Dragonfly spikes soon. Although the last session at the track with the club runners, uh, sadly, somebody had the virus, so they all had to uh, test themselves and everything. Glad I missed out on that one. That's all the running news for you for this week. If you spotted any interesting stories you want to know more about, let me know in the comments. A quick musical interlude for you. I've been digging into the depths of my CD collection once again. There's certain ones I always come back to. One such album is Paul Weller's Heavy Soul. So many good tracks on here, guys. From the title track, Heavy Soul Part 1, I just love the fact the production leaves loads of space so you can hear the wonderful guitar tones. There's some great drumming here as well, really unexpected. It's not one of these mock drum machine type things. It's a real person actually playing the drums. There's tiny little intricacies here and there. There's some fantastic sounds as well on Peacock Suit. Often think of that one whenever I'm getting ready in the morning. Some nice vicious sort of sounds here. Wonderful woody drums. And the bass always seems to be a little more rounded and toneful, I suppose, on Paul Weller tunes. It's not all harsh rock here though. I Should Have Been There To Inspire You is a wonderful ballad. Really stands out well, this one. It was released back in 1997, and it still sounds great today. Some albums age really badly due to production, but this one sounds just as good now. Paul Weller with Heavy Soul. Thanks for tuning in, sticking with me to the end of today's video, guys. Always appreciated. Running news will return next week. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when we launch those new videos for you. Help the channel out too in terms of that YouTube algorithm by hitting that thumbs up and also sharing this video with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.